Hello, and thank you so much for joining me for this brief Christmas message. I hope that you and your family are safe and well, and that you're looking forward to Christmas this year. 2020 has brought so many changes to our daily lives, hasn't it? And yet some things remain the same, and some things about Christmas remain the same, even though it's going to be different this year. One of those things, of course, is the giving and receiving of Christmas presents. I wonder how you're getting on with your Christmas shopping. Why do we do it? Why do we give gifts to each other? It's because it's an expression of love. An expression of love and care and kindness one to the other. And it reminds us that Jesus was given gifts. He was given gifts by those three wise men who visited him. Gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And beyond that, it reminds us that Jesus Christ is himself the greatest gift that has ever been given. We thought in our previous video about gold and about the fact that it tells us that this baby was born to be the true king. And today I'd like to think with you about frankincense. Let me read to you some verses from Matthew's Gospel and chapter 2 and verse 9. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. I want you to notice what the wise men did when they saw the child. They came in, they found Mary, and there they saw uh, the infant Jesus, and they bowed down and worshipped him. You know, I'm sure that you, like me, uh, you love to be shown the newborn babies of your friends and family and loved ones. It's a wonderful thing to see a newborn baby, and yet we don't bow down and worship them. Why did these wise men bow down and worship Jesus? You know, I wonder who you believe that Jesus Christ is. I wonder who you believe he is. Do you believe he was a, a good man who taught good morals? Do you believe perhaps he was a philosopher or a prophet or maybe just a, a hoax or a myth. But these wise men thought there was something very significant about this child. And the answer to that is in the frankincense. If you were to come with me uh, through time to the temple in the Old Testament part of the Bible, and you were to imagine walking into that temple, you would smell frankincense. You would smell frankincense because God had given instructions, clear instructions, in the Old Testament, in the book of Exodus, that frankincense, along with other spices, was to be burned as incense before God, as an act of worship. So when we think about frankincense, we're thinking about the worship of God himself. When these wise men bowed down before the infant Jesus, they were worshipping God himself. Not just a good man, not just somebody who would grow up to be a moral teacher, but this baby was God himself. You know, that's quite a claim, isn't it? To believe, as I do and as all Christians do, that God himself came down at Christmas time and was born there, the Son of God, at Bethlehem in the manger. And yet it tells us something so important. It tells us that God did not want to remain distant or separate from mankind, but wants to have a relationship with us. Wants to have a relationship with us. You know, some people worshipped him. The shepherds worshipped him, you remember? They were the first to know. And then the wise men worshipped him. And many people came to follow him uh, through Jesus' life when he started to, uh, to preach the good news. Uh, and he started to do miracles and signs and wonders. People followed him. And still today, millions upon millions of people follow him. But not everyone does. And when he first came there at Bethlehem, some worshipped him. But as he grew up, some grew to hate him. And at the end of his life, at the end of his life, Jesus Christ was crucified. He was put to death on a cross just outside the city of Jerusalem. I've said to you that the wise men worshipped him because he was God. How could God die on a cross? How could God be put to death on a cross? Well, it's actually all part of God's eternal plan. This was always the plan of God, that he would send his one and only son, to die, to pay the price for all of our wrongdoing. You know that you and I, if we look inside, we have wrongdoing within us. The Bible calls it sin. The things that we do and say and think that are wrong and that disobey God. And it makes, 
it impossible for us to have a relationship with a pure and holy God. And yet God wants a relationship with you and with me. And he's made a way possible by sending his son who was pure and spotless and perfect, who never did anything wrong. And he was sent to the cross and there he died and there he took the anger and the wrath of God against sin instead of you and instead of me. You know, on the cross, the Lord Jesus said some remarkable things. But one of the statements that he made, I just think is so moving. There on the cross, as the very people that God had created were putting him to death, he looked up to heaven and he said this, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. At that very moment, the Lord Jesus was paying the price for my sin and for yours. There's a verse in the book of Romans that I'd like to read to you as we finish. Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. And it says this, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. That's a promise. You know, we believe that three days after the crucifixion and death of the Lord Jesus, he rose from the grave and we believe that he's still alive today. And so we believe that you can still have a relationship with him today. And Christian people all over the world are those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus and have a living relationship with him. You know, the wise men came to Jesus and they brought gifts. But you and I, when we come to Jesus, all we can bring is our sin. All we can bring is our wrongdoing and lay it at his feet and he takes it all and forgives it all. You know, it's a wonderful thing to come to Jesus personally and to place your faith and trust in him. I hope that you will. I hope that you will. And this Christmas, you will be able to worship him as your God and your saviour. Every blessing as you prepare for Christmas. The first Noel The angel did say Was to Bethlehem Shepherds in fields as they lay In fields where they Stop.